Hello and welcome to our today's tutorial. In our today's tutorial, we are going to look at the books of original entry. The books of original entry. These books of original entry, they are actually the books where transactions are first recorded as they occur in the business. As the transactions occur in the business, they come into these books of original entry first before they are transferred into the other recordings that is the ledger accounts. That's why they are known as the books of original. This is where we have the original data. These books of original entry, they are also known as the journals. They are also referred as the journals. They are also known as the subsidiary books, the day books, the prime books, the diaries. All those are simply the synonyms for books of original entry, where transactions as they occur in the business are first recorded before they are transferred into the ledger accounts. So these books of original entry are the sales journal, the purchases journal, the sales returns journal, the purchases returns journal, the cash book, and in the cash book we have got the four types of cash books, the three cash book, the single column cash book, the two column cash book, and the three column cash book. You will realize that when these books of original entry are being prepared in the business, we normally use a certain source document which will provide information for its preparation. So the source documents, remember we said, are those documents the business is going to receive or issue in the process of conducting this business. So those documents that we are going to receive from our suppliers or we are going to issue to our customers, they become the source documents. So those documents, when they are filed in each and every separate file, we normally use them at the end of the day to assist us in preparing the books of origin entry. So it is very important for you also to understand which is the source document for each and every book of origin entry. When you consider the book of original entry number one, which is the sales journal, a sales journal is going to contain all those sales that were made on credit. So in that sales journal, we only record the debtors, the credit customers, the accounts receivables. We only found the accounts receivable in the sales journal, the sales journal. So a source document that we are going to use to prepare the sales journal, it is actually the sales invoice also regarded as the outgoing invoice. When we sell goods on credit, we normally issue an invoice to request the customers to pay. Those invoices that we have issued to our customers, they become now the source documents when we want to prepare the sales journal. Note that for the sales journal, the sales invoice or the outgoing, outgoing is simply because it is us, the business, who are issuing it out to our customers. Note that. Number two, we have got the purchases journal. What is the role of the purchases journal or what does it record? It records goods that have been bought from the suppliers on credit. Goods bought on credit from the suppliers, it is going to be, or they are going to be contained in this particular kind of a journal known as the purchases journal. So it contains the creditors, it contains the creditors. Once you have bought goods on credit, the supplier will send you the purchases invoice. And therefore, the purchases invoice is actually the source document, the purchases journal. The purchases invoices, also known as incoming, because we are receiving them from the suppliers. So in the business, they are coming in from the suppliers. That's why they are known as the incoming invoices. We file them separately at the end of the period. We use them to prepare the purchases done. Then we have the sales returns journal, which contains or captures all the details regarding those customers who have returned goods back to the business. Those customers, the moment they return goods into the business, we normally record them in the sales returns, also known as the return inwards journal. And its source document is known as the credit note. Remember, a credit note is a document that is issued by the business to the customer who has returned the goods, 
who actually reduce the amount that was initially there, sales invoice. This amount is the sales invoice. The moment the customer has returned goods, that amount needs to be reduced because the customer cannot pay for the goods that has been returned. So a credit note will be issued to reduce that overcharge that is in the sales invoice. Remember, an overcharge has come as a result of goods being returned. In the sales invoice, we issued the invoice for all the goods. But for the goods that have been returned, then we need to reduce that amount in the invoice. And that's when we issue the credit note. Credit note issued when sales returns are going to be witnessed. And therefore, in preparing our sales returns, we use the credit notes that we have issued to our customer in that period. The next book of original entries, the purchase sales returns, also known as the return outwards journal. This one records the value of goods the business, which is our business, has returned back to the suppliers. When we return some goods back to the suppliers, we consider those goods as return outwards or purchases returns. And the moment we return them, we are supposed to receive a debit note from the supplier to whom we have returned those goods. So all those debit notes that we are going to receive from our suppliers for the goods returned to them, they are going to be the source document for that particular journal, which is the purchases returns. And we have the cash flows. Cash book number one, where we have the petty cash book, which normally uh, get prepared when a business is going to be witnessing certain recurrent uh, expenditures that are also of trivial amount. Instead of recording them in the main cash book, we record them in the petty cash book, and you realize that that petty cash book will be prepared using what we call the petty cash vouchers. Once a petty cashier has uh, issued a certain amount of money to somebody for petty cash transaction, that person should sign a petty cash voucher. That petty cash voucher becomes a source document to the petty cash box. And then for the single column, two column, and three column cash books, we normally use the cash receipts, which will serve as the source documents. Because the moment you pay, you are issued with a receipt. The moment you are paid, you issue a receipt. So those cash receipts, they become the books of original entry, uh, not books of original entry, but rather they become the source documents in preparing the cash books. In preparing the cash books. I want to share a question that was tested, which was actually requiring the candidates to respond on the, the, the source documents for the books of original entry highlighted. There is this question for November 2022, question 3A, question 3A, part two, question 3A, part two. The question is here, it reads that for each of the following books of accounts, identify the relevant source document. You are told it is the sales day book. The sales day book is simply the sales journal and its source document is the sales invoice or if you write, you can write, the outgoing invoice. Then B, they tell you the cash book. When it is just the cash book, just write there the cash receipts. It becomes the source document. For return inwards, it is the same as sales returns journal. You note there and say that its source document is the credit note. Its source document is the credit note. And then for return outwards journal, its source document is going to be debit note because return outwards are purchases returns and when purchases returns are made the supplier should send us a debit note and that now becomes our source document so that is what the question was requiring that is what the question was requiring once that is understood about the books of original it is very important for you to understand what is the role for each and every book of original entry or a book the sales journal record only the credit the customers, the debtors. This one to record only the credit suppliers who are the creditors or accounts receivables. This one, the sales returns or return inwards to record the value of goods returned back by the customers into the business. 
the purchases returns or return outward to record the value of goods that have been returned by the business back to the supplier. These ones, the four of them, they deal with goods. They deal with goods only. Then uh, for the cash books, they shall be dealing with cash transactions. Then uh, it is now good for us to be able to understand how do we prepare the books of original entry? How do we prepare the books of original entry? The first four, the sales journal, the purchases journal, the sales returns and the purchases returns. If you are not given the, the invoice numbers and the credit note number, we normally use a simplified version whereby we only record the dates, the details and the amount. The date the transaction took place, details is either the customer or the supplier involved, the amount is the value of the transaction. Those three columns can serve us very well. So I want us to refer to the second question, the second question that is in this document. To prepare the four of them, you are told, the following transactions relate to Tausi Enterprises for the month of uh, November 2021. This is the question that was tested in November 2022, and it was in question number 5B. And it was requiring the candidates to record the above transactions in the relevant journals. Some of uh, the students might mistake this one with the relevant wage account. No, these are journals. These are the books of original entry. The books of original entry, they have that format, the date, the details, and then the amount. And then you realize that it is going to be very easy to do it. So you can have a screenshot of that, and then we can go to the board and solve it. We can go to the board and solve it. Have a screenshot. So maybe before we go to the board, we can read through those transactions and then find out which are the necessary journals that we need to prepare. On November 2nd, it says that bought goods for 45,000 from Tempo Traders on credit. When you buy goods on, cre on credit, it goes to the purchases journal. So we needed to prepare a purchases journal. Sold goods for 12,000 to Simbuni on credit. When you sell on credit, you open the sales journal. Returned goods for 12,000 to Tembo. Remember from Tembo we had bought. Now we are returning. Then they become the purchases returns. So we needed to prepare the purchases returns journal. Then we have uh, sold goods for 38,000 to Paulo on credit. If it is on credit, it must go to the sales journal. Bought goods for 66,000 on credit from Twiga. Those are goods bought that goes to the purchases journal. Paulo returned. Remember, we had, uh, we had sold goods to Paulo. When Paulo returns those goods, then they become sales returns. So we record them in the sales returns. Mm -hmm. Then on 26, uh, returned goods worth 2,400 to Twiga. Twiga, we had purchased from them. Twiga, we had purchased from them. So those ones will be recorded as purchases returns because we are returning them. And on that here, On that year, we are told sold goods for 26,000 to Simbuni on credit. If we sell goods on credit, we record them in the sales returns. We record them in the sales returns. So let us have them uh, actually drawn. We have agreed we need sales journal, purchases journal, sales returns, and the purchases returns. So how do we prepare them? That would be our sales journal. Then we have the purchases journal. Then 
details amount. We have here the sales returns. Yano with the columns date, details, amount. Lastly, it is the purchases in terms. Yano with the columns date. Details and then amount. Like that. We can go now to the question and record those transactions in the relevant journals. Remember, journal is not regular. These are the journals. When you are told you prepare journals, you prepare this kind of statements. Don't prepare the major accounts. So on November 2nd, bought goods for 45,000 from Tembo traders on credit. From Tembo traders on credit. So we have agreed those are supposed to go to their sales journal. So this is November 2nd. You write here the name of the customer to whom we sold the goods, and that person is Tembo, Tembo traders. Sorry, we bought. Sorry, we bought. We bought. We bought. We bought. Sorry. November 2nd, we bought from Tembo traders, not sold. We bought from Tembo traders, and the value of goods that we bought were 45,000. On November 4th, we sold, now we record them in the sales journal. And we sold to Simbuni. You write the name of the customer there. Simbuni, and the amount is 12,000. On eight, returned goods for 12,000 to Tembo. Remember, from Tembo, we had bought, it is purchases. Eh? When we return, we record them in the purchases returns. That is on, on November 8th. You write here, you have you returned it to Tembo Traders. The value of goods returned is 12,000. Like that. On 12th, sold goods for 38,000 to Paulo. You need to come to sales journal. Record there on 12th. The customer is Paulo. The amount of goods sold to him, 38,000. On 18th, bought goods, you go to the purchases journal. From who? Bought goods of 66,000 from Twiga. From Twiga traders. From Twiga traders, the value of the goods is 66,000. Then on the 22nd, Pauro returned the goods worth 10,000. Remember, Pauro, we had sold the goods to him. When those goods are returned back to the business, they should go to their sales returns. That is on November 22nd. They have been returned by Pauro. The value of goods, the value of goods is 10,000. The value of goods is 10,000. Then on the 26th, returned goods was 2,400 to Twiga. Those now becomes purchases returns, purchases returns on 26th, return to trigger traders. The value of goods returned to trigger traders is 2,400. Then lastly, that year, sold the goods for 26,000 to Simbuni on credit. We are selling again to Simbuni. You record that one again. That year, we sold the goods to Simbuni. The value of the goods is 26,000. The value of the goods is 26,000. And that is the end of the posting. We go ahead now and we get the total for each and every journal. Like that. 
that. So you will realize that for the purchases with Hans Jano, we have got a total of 14,400. This is the total purchases returns. That is the total purchases returns. Here we have the total credit sales. The total credit sales will amount to 12,000 plus 38 plus 26,000. You get 76,000. For the total purchases, total credit, purchases will be 45,000 plus 66,000, giving us 111,000. Then this one, the total sales returns. The total sales returns is 10,000. The total sales returns is 10,000. In some cases, you can be told to, to also prepare the ledger accounts. These totals, these totals for each and every journal, they are supposed to go to the general ledger. When we were talking about ledger accounts, I told you that ledger accounts are classified into three. We have got the purchases ledger, that reports the credit customer, the credit suppliers rather. The credit suppliers are recorded in the purchases ledger. A ledger is a book, and in that book we have got ledger accounts. That ledger account, or those ledger accounts that are going to be contained in the purchases ledger, are simply ledger accounts related to the credit suppliers, the creditors, or the accounts payable. Then in the sales ledger, which is another ledger, it contains the names or the accounts of the debtors or accounts receivables. So a ledger is a book. In that book, we have accounts. The accounts that we are going to find in the sales ledger, it is the accounts for the debtors, the accounts receivables. Purchases contains ledger for the creditors, the suppliers or accounts payables. And then we have got the general ledger. The general ledger now contains the ledger accounts for all the other category of accounts including the purchases account, the sales account, and the sales returns and the purchases returns. The ledger accounts will be the general ledger. But each and every customer, each and every customer here will be in the sales ledger. But the total sales account, it is in the general ledger. So the same case applies to the purchases. These suppliers, the accounts are in the purchases ledger. But now the purchases account, which contains the sum of all of them, is normally in the, uh, in the general ledger. So when you are told to prepare the ledger accounts, you need to do a very simple key accounts. For this one, you can say these two, these two customers, they are going to be found in the sales ledger. They are going to be found in the sales ledger, whereby we can have the account for Paulo, And then we also have the account for Simbuni. So how are we going to capture them? How are we going to capture them? Remember these are debtors, so we normally write here, the first one occurred on 12th. You write here, it occurred as a result of sales. For Paulo, 38,000. For Simbuni, it occurred on that year. You come here, sorry, this first one on fourth, right there, sales on the debit side, 12,000. The other one, Simbuni, occurred on that year. Record again here, sales of 26,000. Sales of 26,000. Sorry, there is a reflection here, but this is sales of 12,000 and sales of 26,000 for Simbuni, for Simbuni. There's a reflection there, let me put it here. 
in Bruni, we have got the credit side and the debit side. The first sales occurred to him on 4th. Right here on 4th, we had sales of 12,000. The other one is on that here, sales of 26,000. Those are the two customers. You debit them because they are members. And this one is in the sales ranger. A ranger is a book. In that book, page one is for Paulo account. Page two, Simbuni account. You record what happened in them. Then in the purchases ranger, whereby we are going to capture now the creditors. Let me put it here. We have not captured actually the returns. We can capture the returns here and finish with them. We had the sales returns here from Paulo. When Paulo returns in the goods, we record them on the other side. On 22nd, sales returns. He returned the goods of 10,000. We credit Paulo by 10,000. We credit Paulo by 10,000. Simbuni did not return anything. That's why we don't have this name here in the sales return. Then uh, now on the purchases, we shall find them in the in the purchases ledger. That is where we shall have these accounts for these people. Tembo and Twiga, we had purchased from them. So we can have the Tembo account. which we need to credit. We just come here and say, on second, we did purchases to him or from him. What? 45,000. Then we also need to have Twitter. You credit, the date was 18. Right here, my cases. Of how much? Uh, just that. If there is any return that were made to them, which we have here, we had on 8th, we returned goods to Tembo, 12,000. 26, we returned goods to Figa, 2,400. We capture them here now on the debit side. So you come here and say, Tembo on 8th, we have got purchases returns. Purchases returns of 12,000. Twiga on 26, we have got purchases returns of 2400. Just that, and you have finished with in the purchases ledger. The last thing you will do now is to come here and say in the general ledger now. In the general ledger, what are we going to have in the general ledger? We are going to have the sales account. We are going to have the purchases account. We are going to have the sales returns. And then we are also going to have the purchases returns. We are going to have the purchases returns. Let me have it here. We normally use just the totals, the totals in the journals. Like for example, the purchases returns, the total is 14,000. The total is 14,400 here. And the purchases returns, we know it's normally credited. We come here and credit here. We normally come and credit. The purchases returns, they were returned to creditors. They were returned to creditors, 14,400, just that. For the sales, it is normally credited. They were sold to debtors. They were sold to debtors. The total for sales was 26,000. For the purchases, it's normally debited. We purchase from creditors. Remember, they are all on credit. They are all on credit, 11,000. Sales returns is normally debited. 
it is now as a result of the debtors who have returned the total of 10,000. All this is in the general ledger. In the general ledger, we put the totals there. So that is how we do the sales journal, purchases journal, sales returns, and the purchases returns. But note, in this question, you are not supposed to do the ledgers. In this question that we have tackled here, you are only supposed to do the four. Nobody told you to do the ledgers. I was just going an extra mile just in case you are asked to put them in the journals and then open the ledger accounts. How do you open them? But in this one, you are only required to do the four of them, the sales journal, purchases journal, sales returns, and the purchases returns journals only. You get the totals, you stop there. But in case you are told, put them in the journals and then open the ledger accounts, that is how you are supposed to deal with them. You need to go and say in the sales journal, Use the customers that are in the sales journal, debit them by sales. If there is anybody who returned goods, you credit the account of that person who returned the goods by the value of goods returned. Purchases, these are liabilities. The accounts of these people, they are creditors. You credit them by purchases. You credit them by purchases. If there is anybody who returned the goods, they become purchases. Uh, if there is anybody to whom we return the goods, they debit the accounts like that. And then the totals in the, uh, in the journals, we normally go and open the accounts there. And we say that these accounts are in the general ledger. And that is the end of it. Allow me now to take you to the cash books. The cash books. We start with the first one, which is the petty cash book. The petty cash book was uh, November 20, 2022, not indicated there, but it is 2022 for RCHRP, it was in question 2B. The petty cash book is normally prepared on the impressed system. Impressed system simply means that the petty cashier is given the money at the beginning of the period, he spends that money in that period. At the end of the period, we find out the balance and then we give the petty cashier back the amount equivalent to what he or she has spent. If I give or you are given as a petty cashier 50,000, you have spent 45,000. Then at the beginning of the new month, you are given back the 45,000 that you spent. So that 45,000 that you are given back plus the 5,000 that you had as balance it will give you the same float of 50,000. The float is the amount of money that the petty cashier is supposed to spend on that period. The petty cashier, the amount given to spend on is known as the float. Then at the end of each and every period, you are reimbursed. Reimbursement simply means you are given back the amount equivalent to what you spent. And that whole story is what we call the interest system. So each and every month as a petty cashier, you receive what you spend you receive what you spend. So that now together in the balance, you can go back to the float amount. So in this case, this question was tested and uh, the students were required to do a petty cash book to record the above transactions. What was expecting or was expected from them is this. So the format of the petty cash book is, uh, we normally have the column. The first column is to record in the float, which is known as the receipt. Then we have the column for the date. We have the column for the details. We have got the column for the expense amount. This is for expenses. And then we now have the columns for the analysis columns. Analysis columns. In this question, we are told analysis column should include wages. So we should have a column for the wages there. Then it should also include postage. It should also include mails. 
and then also include stationery and also ledger. Those are actually the analysis columns that we are told to use. So like that. So note on the receipt column, we only record the fruit. Either the balance and the money reimbursed back. We don't record expense amount paid there in the receipt. No, only the fruit amount. Then here, the amount that we paid should also be recorded here and in one of these analysis columns. So if, for example, we have paid for stationary 10,000, we record it in the amount and then to the corresponding analysis column. So let us see what the question says. Eshima operates a sole proprietorship business in the county of Kazo, Kazamoy. She keeps a petty cash book on the impressed system with a fraud of 80,000. The following are the petty cash transactions for the month of August, 2022. So those are the transactions. Number one, petty cash in hand. That is the balance. So you come here on the date, right here, August 1. The details is the balance brought down. But don't record here, record this side because it is the fraud amount balance, 10,300. Then we are told on the second, petty cash restored to interest amount. So in, on 2nd of August, then there is cash that was given to the petty cashier to restore the interest. Remember the interest is 80,000. The interest is 80,000. So how much had been spent if he had a balance of 10,300? So what the person should get as a reimbursement should be equal to 80,000, which is the product, minus the balance of 10,300. The person had spent 6,900, and that is what should be reimbursed. That is what should be reimbursed so that together with the balance, he or she can have a fraud of 8,000, which is 69,700, like that. Those two are belonging to the fraud. They should be in that list column. They should not be the amount. Amount is when you are paid. Here now, we continue. We continue. On, uh, on, that, on theme, paid wages, to come and record the date if what he paid was wages. Now, you, because it's an expense, it goes to the amount first, 11,956. That one corresponds to wages, 11,956. Like that. Then on the ninth, we paid for email. Email expenses, how much? 5,432. That one belongs to the maids. That one belongs to the maids. Not with, not with postage, not stationary, not razor. We put it there again. 5,432. Then on 13th, paid wages. Wages again. How much? 11. Eight wages eleven six eight. On fifteen, we bought full scraps. Full scraps of uh, six one eight. So you write them under the stationaries. They belong to the stationaries six one eight. On 19th, paid wages, wages paid again, 11,880, they belong here. On 21st, 
postage stamps. Postage stamps amounting to 4840. Those ones, they belong to the postage, 4840. On 24th, paid wages, amount is 11,992. They belong here, wages column. On the 26th, we paid back uh, Dabu. Dabu is a creditor, 4704. That is where we record Raja. When you pay a creditor, you record it under Raja. Raja is for the creditors. When you pay a creditor, put it under Raja. Then on that yet, we bought envelopes. Envelopes amounting to 3880. They belong to the stationaries. 3880. 3880. Then on uh, 31st, setting cash reimbursement. Eh? And that one we need to compute. So, what you do once you have done that? All these analysis columns, you do a total of each. Do a total of each column. Like uh, putting this. Let us do for the wages. Getting 47, 548. This one is 4840. This one is 5432. The other one is going to be 618 plus 38. Get 10, 0, 60. And this one is 4704. Those are the expense columns total. Then now we can add this to get the total amount paid, or we can simply add the totals for each and every analysis column. Get the total here. So let us add this in the hands easier. Plus 704 plus 840 A total of 72, 544. 72, 544. Remember, our fruit is 8,000. So if we had 8,000 at the beginning, we have spent 72, 544. We are going to have here a balance carried down, which is now the equivalent to the reimbursement. Remember, we reimburse what, uh, not actually the reimbursement. Uh, the balance that we have at hand. The balance that we have at hand. So it is going to be 8,000 minus that total, which is uh, 7,456. So that now we can have 8,000. And here we can have 8,000. So reimbursement here, The reimbursement will be how much? Eh? It is going to be the amount spent. We reimburse what we have spent. Eh? 72, 544. That is the amount that is going to be reimbursed. What you have spent, what you have spent is what you reimburse. And that is how simple you prepare a petty cash book. This is our petty cash book. This is our petty cash book. We have this column for only the float, balance and the reimbursement. This one, the expenses paid must first be recorded here before it is recorded in one of the analysis columns. Then the total or the analysis and close with the double lines, get the total either by adding this or by adding that, then you subtract from 
the total wrote, you get the balance here. What you have spent, you subtract from the amount you had as float. And that becomes a very simple way of preparing a petty cash flow. Next, I want us to have a very brief discussion on the two column cash book. Two column cash book. For the two column cash book, we don't have discount. We don't have discount. It is simply a cash book where cash and bank are actually contained in one cash book. Cash and bank accounts are actually fused together and we prepare one big account for both of them. But always remember when it comes to cash book, on the debit, we have the cash received and the bank or checks received. On the credit, we have the payments, either the cash paid or the checks issued. That is what you need to know. In the cash book, again, remember, we only deal with cash transactions. We don't deal with anything on credit. If it is on credit, the date that particular credit transaction occurred, you ignore that date. You only record the date when money is received or paid. Let us have a look at this question on November 2022, question 2B. You can have a screenshot on that as I go on the board. So, two column cash book. So that is actually our two column cash book. On the DR side, we have the cash and the bank columns to record any cash or checks received. On the credit side or the payment side, we have the cash and the bank accounts to record any checks issued or any cash paid. Very simple, very simple. So always, either the business is starting we shall debit the capital there. If the business is ongoing, we need to capture the balances, the opening balances. But note, for cash, it will always be on the debit. It will always be on the debit. But for the bank, it can be on the debit, but sometimes we can have a bank overdraft, which goes to the credit as opening balance. So note that. In this question, maybe somebody can ask, how do we know that it is a two-column cash book and not a three-column cash book? If you look at the cash book, there's no way we are told about the discount. If there is no discount, either allowed or received, then just know that you are doing a two column cash book. Just know we are doing a two column cash book. Like in this case, nowhere, in those transactions, there's nowhere where discount is actually mentioned. So we do actually a two column cash book. And then you also note that in this question, the balance brought down the cash and the bank. In the bank, they were silent. They did not tell us credit. So we consider it as a debit. 
when it is a credit balance, they will specifically tell you the bank, either they put into bracket CR, meaning that it is a credit balance, or they write their bank and then they tell you it's an overdraft, or they call it bank overdraft. That is when you take it on the credit. But when the figure is given, like in this case, 525,000, and they don't tell you whether it's a credit balance, you consider it as a debit balance. So you come here and record, this is the month of March, March 1, they are balance brought down for cash 130,000 for bank 525,000. Those are the opening balances on the debit. Then transactions for the month on that both goods cash. Here, remember in the cash book, we are simply talking about money in and money out. Nothing else. So when you buy goods, you pay. So that is a payment. It is money out, money out. You come here and say, act three. You bought goods. When you buy goods, we normally call them purchases. Don't forget that. And it was cash, 25,000. It was in cash form, 25,000. It is a payment in the cash. Sold goods. When you, sold, you sell goods, money in. It is a receipt. Come here and record on seven. That is what we call sales. Put it as 65,000 in cash. It is a cash receipt. Paid electricity, that is money out. That is money out as a payment. On eight, what did we pay for? Electricity. How much? 36,800 by check. So it is a bank payment. 36,800 by check. Payment through bank. On the 13th, sold goods and received payment by check. When you sell and you receive check, that means that bank will be receiving that money. That is on 13th. It is sales again, but this time received in form of check. Seven or 8,000. Bank. Bank receipt. Paid rent by check. It is a payment through bank. Come here, record the date, which is 15th. What you paid, it is rent. Payment through the bank, 120,000. It's a check payment. It reduces the bank balance. Received a check for dividends. Received, that is money in. On 16, dividends. How much? 78,000 check is in the bank. 24 received interest by cash. It is a receipt, money in. You put it on the receipt side, interest in the form of cash, 26,000. Last three paid insurance on 28th, that is money out to pay insurance. How much is this? It is 16,000 by check. 316,000 by check. It is a payment through the bank. Once you have done that, it is very simple. And I repeat here in the cash book, money in and money out. If it is on credit, like for example, sold goods on credit to John, that transaction will skip on that date. Until when we shall be told, received a check of 10,000 from Jeff, John, there's a receipt. Don't record anything on credit in the cash book. Once that one is understood, balancing becomes very simple. I balance the cash. The cash that I received here, it is a total of how much? 130,000, which was our balance in the previous month, plus 65,000, plus 26,000. I have a total of 221,000. On the payment side, I have only paid a cash of 25. So this 221,000, I subtract 25,000, then it means that I have a balance of 196,000. The total cash received minus the payment. On that year, I'm going to have the balance carried down of 196,000. So that the total here can be 221. 
So I take the total on this side, I minus the total on the other side to get this balance so that the totals can be equal. I balance the bank. This side seems to be more. The total bank receipt 525,000 plus 708,000 plus 78,000 gives us 1 million. 311,000. That is the total bank receipt. And how much did we spend? Out of this, we spend this. 36,800 plus 120,000 plus 316,000. We get 472,800. That is what we spend, but we had this. This is what was in our bank. We spend a total of 400 to 800. So what is the balance? We have a balance here in the same line as the balance carried down for cash. 838 to 100. So that the total can be equal to this. 1 million 311,000. Done. That is the end of that to column cash. So that when we shall be starting the new month, that is the first of April. First of April, we shall have this as balance uh, brought down. The balance brought down for this was this, but for the next month now we shall use this. Uh, uh, 196,000 for cash, 838,200 for bank. When we start the new month, that is it. And that is the end of your two column cash flow. Very easy to compare. Very easy to compare. Simply consider money in and money out. You are not doing double entry here. Is it money in or is it money out? If it is money in, from where? According the money. Money out, paying what? The call. Check or buy cash. And that one becomes your two column cash flow. That one. Cash book. Lastly, remember cash book is still a, a book of original entry. Lastly is there the three column cash book. I want us to demonstrate it using December 2017, question 6A. where you are told record the events in the three column cash book and balance of the account as at 31st October 2017. It is still the same thing as the two column cash book. Only that we are going to include the cash discounts. Cash discounts are cash uh, discount allowed or the discount received. Discount allowed and the discount received. Take a screenshot of that as I in the board. Of that. So for the three column cash book, we are going to have the dates, the details. Here we have the discount allowed, then cash, then, then bank. Here we shall have again the date and details. Here now we are going to find the discount received, cash, and bank. That is our three column cash book. Discount allowed becomes on the receipt side. As you are receiving money, some of them you have allowed them discount. Some of the customers from whom you are getting the money, you have allowed them discount, so you will be receiving less. So it is on the receipt side because 
discount allowed, it is normally allowed to your customers. So as you receive money to them from them, sorry, you deduct the discount. So it is allowed on the receipt. Discount received, you receive discount when you pay. That is why it is on the payment side. That's why it is on the payment side. As we pay our suppliers, some of them will actually give us a discount. We shall be receiving discount from some of them. So we deduct the discount we have received. We pay the rest of the amount. So the question says that the following transactions took place at Bosira Shoes Dealers during the month of October 2017. Opening balances. You see now in that case, they have told you the cash account, it is that 2400 debit, but for the bank account, it is 19800 on the credit. So bank will go to that side, cash will come here. You record the date, which is uh, October. The balance brought down. For cash, it is on the debit, we put it on the receipt, that's 2400. This is naturally the DR. This side will be the PR for payment. So for the bank, the same date, October 1, we have the balance brought down. The bank, it is an overdraft. That's why it is on this side, 19,800. Must be very careful when you are recording the balance for the bank. If it is clearly stated, like in this one, that it is credit, put it in the credit column. Then transactions during the month, borrowed 72,200 72, cash from Wafula. When you borrow to cash, it is money in. You are receiving that money. You are receiving that money. And if it again, cash book, it is simply money in or money out. Don't focus on what happened to the other person or the other account. We are not doing double entry here. Either cash in or cash out. Check in or check out. If it is money in here, if it is check in here, if it is cash out here, if it is check out here. So when you borrow money from Wafura, Wafura will be giving you money. So cash will be received here. Second, right here, money from Wafura. Wafura, cash 72, 200. That's that. On fourth, both stock, when you buy, you pay. That is money out. On credit from Asha, that is on credit. When a transaction has occurred on credit, skip that. We shall consider it when payment will be made. Then on the fifth, deposited that 1650 cash in the bank. We call that one a contra entry. Money is not moving out, money is not moving in. It is only changing from our bank account to our cash account, or sometimes from cash account to bank account. That one will affect the receipt and the payment at the same time. So in this case, uh, deposited that 1650 cash in the bank. Bank will be receiving money. Bank will be receiving that 1650 from cash. You put it into bracket C, that is on which date? That is on uh, on fifth. On the same date, fifth, cash will be reducing. It's like a payment in cash that one six fifty, and it is going to the bank. It's a contra entry. It is received in the bank, but it is from cash. Cash is paying out, going to the bank. That is how we capture the contract entry. It must appear in both receipt and payment. But you consider if it is a receipt, which account is receiving? Here it is a deposit in the bank. We record the amount in the bank here. On the other side, it's a payment. Which account is paying? Cash is paying. Money is moving out of cash. We put it as a payment in cash. On seventh, return stock worth 43.50 to Asha. Does that transaction involve money in or money out? No, nobody is refunding anybody. So there's no money out or money in. Do you know that? On a paid telephone expenses, 8,300 using check. So it is a payment on a 
What are we paying? Ten and more. How much? It's a three hundred check. Put here as a bank payment. On uh, ninth, made credit purchases. When you sell on credit, no cash in, no cash out. You know that. On the tenth, received a check that six nine hundred as rent income. That is a receipt money in. On 10, we received the money from rent. From rent, that 6,900 in check huh, is going to be here. I received in the bank. On 14th, made credit sales at 24,300 to Secundo. If it is on credit, ignore. No cash in, no cash out. Don't bother with credit transaction. Focus on those transactions where money is involved. On the 17th, paid by cash the full amount due to Asha. Now we can record. Amount due to Asha, you refer to transaction on fourth. On fourth, that is when we bought a stock of 19,900 on credit from Asha. Now we are paying. The date of paying is the date we record. We don't record the date of credit purchase. We record the date of payment. So on 17, uh -huh, we paid Asha. How much? In cash, in full. Remember, we refer to this four. It is 19,900. That is what we paid because that is what we owe Asha. On 27th, received in cash, in the cash form, the amount due from Ore Secundo less 2% discount. Ore Secundo, remember, we made that sale on 14th, 24,300. So we shall have, let us have it here, a calculation that is 2% times 24,300. 2% times 24, 300. We get this 486. 486. We received. We received. So this one, 486. It is the discount allowed. This is the discount allowed. So how much are we going to receive? Because this person paid by cash, how much are we going to receive cash? 24,300 minus 486. We are going to receive 23,814. Because this 486 will not be received. So we shall come here and record the date is on. 27th, or a secundo, or a secundo, the discount allowed is 486, record that. And remember, it was received in cash form. So under the cash form, record 23,814. Twenty nine. Paid by check the amount due to Abdi, less 4% cash discount. We bought goods on credit from Abdi on 9th. 9th. So, Abdi bought on 9th, goods valued at 2,800. Now we are deducting 4% of 2,800 as a discount. This one will be discount received. Discount received. So it is going to be 4% times, which is 832. How much are we going to pay? 2800 minus 832. We are going to pay 19,968. We are going to pay 19.68. So, which debt is this? Which debt is this? 29. 
we are paying up the this count the same it is 892 and then we are paying by what i check so it's a bank payment we shall pay 19 and eight that that's the deposited all the cash available in the business into the bank account except 25,000. All the cash that we have, we have deposited in the bank. Whenever you are given such kind of a statement, first of all, we need to know how much is our cash balance. How much is our cash balance? Not cash received, but cash balance. Cash balance, remember, it is cash received minus cash paid. Get the available cash at that date. Then we shall take and remain with 25,000. So, how, how much is the cash balance? Cash balance will be equal to what? Total cash received, that to 400 plus 72. 200 plus 23, 814. You get 128. 128, 414 minus the total cash paid out. That one, 650 plus 19. 900 minus 51, 550. So, how much is our balance? Seventy-six eight sixty-four. That is the available cash balance. If we go to the cash box, that is the amount we get. So when this question is given, most of the students confuse that this is the money that the business has. No, this is just the cash received. But out of the cash received, payments has been made by cash. We must minus the payments so that we can have the balance, the, the balance available. So cash deposited. Cash deposited would be equal to 76,864. We are told we leave behind 25,000. We leave behind 25,000. So, how much are we going to deposit? We are going to deposit 51,864. We are going to deposit 51,864. That simply means on that date, which is on uh, that first. It is a contra entry. We said anytime money is taken to bank or bank to cash, cash to bank, bank to cash, that is a contra entry. So here it is going to the bank because we deposited. So we shall deposit 51,864. Money is coming from cash contra entry. Then we go to the other side that the first cash is paying out 51. 864 and it is paying the bank or deposited into the bank like that. Then you are done. Then you are done. So when you are told deposited or accept, first of all, get the balance. The balance is total cash received, it is total cash paid. You get the balance. From the balance, you deduct what you are leaving behind for you to get what you shall be deposited. <laughs> then when it comes to balancing, Discounts are never balanced. Discounts are never balanced. You just take the totals. But for the cash, we left behind 25,000 here. We left this 25,000. So as at that first, the balance carried down should actually be 25,000. You can compute that to confirm, but that one should be true. If you take this total minus this total up to that point, we have 25,000 that we left behind. For the bank, the receipt minus the payments that one six fifty plus that six nine hundred plus fifty one eight sixty four. The total receipt is the total bank receipt. It is. Uh, 120414. You minus these payments. 19800. 
319.98. You get the balance of 22.346. You put it in the same line as the balance carried down so that it can be 120.414. 120.414. So for cash, we got a total year. The total receipt here was 128.414. Here you add, you find it is going to be 128.414. For the discounts, we said you don't balance. 832 is the discount received. Discount allowed was 486. Those ones are never balanced because they are two different accounts. They are two different accounts. And that is going to be your three column cash book. Your three column cash book. So, three column cash book, it involves some form of discount. If the question has no discount, just prepare two column cash book. Just prepare the two column cash book. I hope you have enjoyed. Anytime you have any question or clarification, get me on 0728 225 688, and then I will be able to offer or help. What is my name? Reach me on that, we can help each other. For today, thank you and bye bye.